Hi, welcome to this Corp Maths video. In this video, we're going to look at how to solve index equations by using logarithms. So this is part two. We've looked previously at part one, and this is part two. So here's our first question. It says solve 2 to the power of 2x, subtract 4 times 2 to the power of x, take away 12 equals 0. Okay, so to solve this equation, just before we begin, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange it slightly. I'm going to focus on this first term, 2 to the power of 2x. So 2 to the power of 2x, I can actually write that as, that's the same as 2 to the power of x squared. Because remember, with a power of a power, you multiply the powers together. So 2 to the power of 2x would be equal to 2 to the power of x squared. Because if I was given 2 to the power of x squared, I would multiply the powers together to get 2 to the power of x. So I can actually rewrite this as, instead of 2 to the power of 2x, I'm going to write 2 to the power of x squared. And then we've got subtract 4 times 2 to the power of x. And then we've got subtract 12 equals zero. Now this looks like a quadratic equation because we've got something squared, subtract four times something, take away 12 equals zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let y equal two to the power of x. So I'm going to let y equal two to the power of x. So instead of two to the power of x, I'm going to write y. So instead of two to the power of x squared, I'm going to write y squared, subtract. And then instead of four times two to the power of x, I'm going to write four times y, so four y, subtract 12, equals zero. So here we've got a quadratic equation and we want to solve this. So let's factorize it. So if we factorize this equation, we're going to get bracket, 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 bracket equals zero. And we're going to put y's at the front of both brackets, so y and y. And we're going to look for two numbers that multiply together to give us minus 12 or negative 12 and add together to give us minus four. So I'm thinking minus six and two because minus six times two is minus 12 and minus six plus two is minus four. So minus six and plus two. So that means if we solve this, we'd have here y is equal to six. So y is equal to 6 or y is equal to negative 2. This is fantastic because now we can replace our y with our 2 to the power of x. So we can replace the y with 2 to the power of x. So I'm just going to scroll down a little bit and I'm going to write 2 to the power of x. So instead of y, 2 to the power of x is equal to 6. And here instead of y, I'm going to write again 2 to the power of x. So 2 to the power of x is equal to negative 2. So that means either 2 to the power of x is equal to 6 or 2 to the power of x is equal to negative 2. Now this one can't actually exist. 2 to the power of x can't give you a negative answer, so this one can't exist. So that means that we've got 2 to the power of x is equal to 6. So let's solve this equation. So I think back to solving index equations part 1, we looked at how to solve these index equations. We could take the logs of both sides and work out x that way. Or we could rewrite this as a logarithm. So if I take the logs of both sides of this, I would get that log 2 to the power of x is equal to log 6. And then we can bring down our power. Remember our third law of logarithms, you can bring down that power. So you'd have x times log 2 is equal to log 6. And then finally, we want to get the x on its own. So let's divide both sides by log 2. So I would leave this with x is equal to log 6 divided by log 2, just dividing both sides by log 2 there. And that's equal to 2.58496 and so on. And that means that x to three decimal places would be, x to three decimal places would be 2.585. And that's it. And that's x to three decimal places. So we've solved that equation. We've found out the value of x. Um, I did mention that you could rewrite this as a logarithm. So rather than taking the logs of both sides here, you could rewrite this as a logarithm. And you've got, if I just do it down here, remember we've got the base, the power, and the answer. So the log to base 2 of the answer would be equal to the power x. So if we just work out, let's turn that around, x is equal to log to base 2 of 6. And if we just type this into our calculator, the log to base 2 of 6, we get an answer of x is equal to 2.5849 and so on. And that's the same as this. So that's it. We've solved that equation. And that's it. So just to recap, in this equation, what we done was we start off with this first term and we wrote it in the form 2 to the power of x squared, just thinking of those laws of indices, a power of a power. So we could split this power up and raise the two up as a power and you get 2 to the power of x squared. And then you'd look at this and you see, well, this is a quadratic equation. So we could replace our 2 to the power of x with y and you get this. This. And then you could just factorize and solve it, and you get the here that y is equal to 6 or y is equal to negative 2. 2 to the power of x cannot equal negative 2, so that means that 2 to the power of x is equal to 6. And then you just solve that, and then that's it. Okay, let's have a look at another question now. Okay, so here's our next one. We've got solve 3 to the power of 2x, subtract 11 times 3 to the power of x, plus 10 is equal to 0. So here we've got our equation, our index equation. And what we're going to do is we're going to start by looking at this first term. We've got 3 to the power of 2x. So remember our laws of indices, if we've got 3 to the power of 2x, we can actually write that as 3 to the power of x 
squared because this is a power of a power you can multiply the powers together so if we had 3 to the power of x squared that would be the same as 3 to the power of 2x and then that means that 3 to the power of 2x would be the same as 3 to the power of x squared so we could write here 3 to the power of x squared subtract 11 times 3 to the power of x and then plus 10 is equal to 0 now if we have a look at this let's replace our 3 to the power of x with y so we're going to get so we'll let y equal 3 to the power of x so here we would get a nice quadratic equation we're going to get y squared subtract 11 times y plus 10 is equal to 0 so we've got this nice quadratic equation that we could hopefully factorize and solve so here if we factorize this we're going to get bracket 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 equals 0 and we've got y squared so let's try a y and a y now the two numbers are going to multiply together to give us 10 and add together to give us a negative 11 so i'm thinking minus 1 and minus 10 and yep that would work so that means that here in terms of this bracket y is equal to 1 or here or y is equal to 10. so there are two possible solutions of that equation for y now we know that y was equal to 3 to the power of x so let's replace our y with 3 to the power of x so we're going to have here 3 to the power of x is equal to 1 or 3 to the power of x is equal to 10. Now here, unlike the last question, both of these could actually work. So if we start off with 3 to the power of x is equal to 1, well here, x would have to be equal to 0, because 3 to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So here, x is equal to 0. Alternatively, again, you could take the logs of both sides and do log 1 divided by log 3 whenever you rearrange that, and you get that's equal to 0 as well. Um, here, we've got, for this equation, we've got 3 to the power of x is equal to 10. Well, let's take the logs of both sides, so the log of 3 to the power of x, x is equal to log 10 bring the x down so bring that power down so you get x times log 3 is equal to log 10 and then finally let's divide by log 3 so we're going to get that x is equal to log 10 divided by log 3 and if we work this on our calculator let's see what we get so the log of 10 which would be 1 divided by log 3 is equal to 2.0959 and so on and if we round that, let's round it to three decimal places, we get that x is equal to 2.096 to three decimal places. So that means that either x is equal to zero or x is equal to 2.096 to three decimal places. And that's it. So let's have a look at our next question. Okay, so our next question says, solve 5 to the power of 2x plus 5 to the power of x plus 1, subtract 14 equals 0. So this equation looks a bit like the last two, where we've got our 5 to the power of 2x, that looks very much like the last two, whereas the middle term's a little bit different. Rather than being something times 5 to the power of x, we've actually got 5 to the power of x plus 1. So let's rewrite this. So let's start off with our first part. We've got 5 to the power of 2x, so 5 to the power of 2x, would be equal to 5 to the power of x squared because remember if we've got a power of a power we can times those two powers together that would be 5 to the power of 2x and that means if you've got 5 to the power of 2x you can actually write it as 5 to the power of x squared so this would be 5 to the power of x squared and then if we have a look at this term here 5 to the power of x plus 1 so 5 to the power of x plus 1 now here what we're actually going to do is we're going to think back to our laws of indices remember if you had x to the power of 3 times x to the power of 4 that's equal to x to the power of 7 remember if, if you think back to your laws of indices if you've got things with the same base and you multiply them you add the powers so if you had x to the power of 3 times x to the power of 4, that'll be x to the power of 7. So here, because you've got something added, we could actually split this up. We could say, well, 5 to the power of x plus 1 would be 5 to the power of x multiplied by 5 to the power of 1. Because if we had 5 to the power of x times 5 to the power of 1, we would add the powers together, and that'll be x plus 1. So we could split this up. And then instead of writing 5 to the power of x plus 1, we could write 5 to the power of x multiplied by 5 to the power of 1. So 5 to the power of x multiplied by 5 to the power of 1. And then we've still got our minus 14, and then that's equal to 0. Okay, now here, just before we do anything else, I actually want to focus on this middle term here, because 5 to the power of 1 is equal to 5, so this is 5, and actually, I'm actually going to put it in front of this 5 to the power of x. Like our last questions, if we look back, we had here, 4 times 2 to the power of x. So what I'm going to do is 5 to the power of 1 is equal to 5. I'm actually going to put it in front of this 5 to the power of x. So here we've got 5 to the power of x squared and then plus 
and then 5 to the power of 1 is just 5, so 5. And then we've got this times by 5 to the power of x. So I'm just going to put this in a bracket, so 5 to the power of x. So this is 5 times 5 to the power of x. And then we've still got our to take away 14, and then that's equal to 0. Now this is fantastic. We've taken what we've been given in the question, and we've got it in this format here, which is a bit nicer. And now we're going to let y, let y equal 5 to the power of x. And that would give us y squared, so y squared plus 5 times y, 5 times y, subtract 14 is equal to 0. And now this is a nice quadratic that we can solve. So let's solve this quadratic and see what we get. So here let's factorize, so bracket, 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 equals 0. And we're going to put y's in the front of both brackets, so y and y. And we're looking for two numbers at times to give it to be minus 14 and add to give it to be 5, so I'm thinking plus 7 and minus 2. Because 7 times minus 2 is minus 14, and minus 2 plus 7 is equal to 5. So that means that here, y is equal to negative 7, or y is equal to 2. So we've got two possible solutions for y there. Now remember that y is equal to 5 to the power of x. So here this would be 5 to the power of x equals negative 7. Or, and instead of y again, we're going to write 5 to the power of x. So 5 to the power of x is equal to 2. So we've now got these two equations. But here, 5 to the power of x cannot equal a negative. So this one can't exist. So we're just left with 5 to the power of x is equal to 2. Okay, so now let's just solve this equation. So let's take the logs of both sides. So the log of 5 to the power of x is equal to log 2. And then if we bring the x down, x log 5 is equal to log 2. And then if you divide by log 5, you're going to get that x is equal to log 2 divided by log 5. And then if we just work that out, we'll find out what x is. So x is equal to 0 0.430676 and so on. And that's it. We've solved that equation. We've found the value of x. And just to mention here, whenever we had this 5 to the power of x equals 2, we could rewrite it as a logarithm instead. So we've got the log of base 5 of the answer, which is 2, is equal to x. And then you could rewrite it as x equals log to base 5 of 2. Just turn it around. And if you work that out, you'll get that answer there. And that's it. So we've solved that equation. And this one here, we just had to do a little bit more rearranging before we started. Okay, let's look at our next question. Okay, so this time we've got solve 2 to the power of 2x plus 1, subtract 11 times 2 to the power of x, plus 15 equals 0. Okay, so let's rewrite this. So here, this part's quite nice, actually, 11 times 2 to the power of x. Here, if we have a look at the first part, let's focus with this 2 to the power of 2x plus 1. Now here we've got this plus, so let's split this up. So instead of writing 2 to the power of 2x plus 1, I'm going to write 2 to the power of 2x times 2 to the power of 1. Because remember, if you times things with the same basis, you add the powers. And if it's 2x plus 1, well, 1 power is going to be a 2x, and 1 power is going to be a 1. So we've split this up. Now what I'm going to do is, well, 2 to the power of 1, well, that's just 2. So we've got 2 to the power of 2x multiplied by 2. And remember here, 2 to the power of 2x, we can write that as 2 to the power of x squared. Because remember, with a power of a power, you times the two powers together. So instead of writing 2 to the power of 2x, we're going to write 2 to the power of x squared. And then we've still got our multiply by 2. So let's replace this 2 to the power of 2x plus 1 with 2 to the power of x squared multiplied by 2. And then we've still got our subtract 11 times 2 to the power of x plus 15 equals 0. And here I'm just going to move this 2 in front. Instead of writing multiply by 2, I'm going to write 2 and then bracket 2 to the power of x squared. Subtract 11 times 2 to the power of x. Those brackets plus 15 equals 0. So we've just brought that 2 in front. Okay, now if we have a look at this, this is, it looks like a nice quadratic. Let's let y, let y equal 2 to the power of x. So then that would be if we replace the 2 to the power of x with y, we would get 2. And then instead of this, we'd have y squared. Subtract 11 y plus 15 equals 0. So then this is quite nice. We can hopefully factorize this and solve this. So bracket, 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 bracket equals 0. We've then got 2y and y. And we want to find two numbers at times together to give us 15. And then whenever we expand our brackets, we're going to get minus 11x. So because it's minus 11x, they're both going to be negative. And I'm thinking if we put the 3 there and the 5 there, then that would work. Yep, that's perfect. OK, so let's solve this. Here we would have that y is equal to 3. Or here, we'd have 2y minus 5 equals 0. Add a 5 to both sides to get 2y equals 5. And then divide by 2 to get y is equal to 5 over 2, or 2.5. OK, so we've now got the y is equal to 5 over 2, or 2.5. Or y is equal to 3. But y is, remember, 2 to the power of x. So here we would have 2 to the power of x 
is equal to 3. And here we would have 2 to the power of x is equal to 5 over 2, or 2.5. So we've now got these two equations. Let's solve them both and then get our values of x. Okay, so in terms of solving these equations, remember you could do the rewrite them as logarithms and say, you could say the log base 2 of 5 over 2 is equal to x and then, and then just turn it around and work it out in your calculator. Or I'm going to take the logs of both sides just because I tend to do that a lot. Uh, so the log of 2 to the power of x is equal to log of 5 over 2 and then bring the x down so you get the x log 2 is equal to the log of 5 over 2 and then if we divide both sides by log 2 we'd get x is equal to the log of 5 over 2 divided by the log of 2 and let's just type that into our calculator and see what we get so x is equal to so x would be equal to 1.3219 and so on and you could round that perhaps to 1.322 or something like that. And here, in terms of this equation, if we take the logs of both sides, the log of 2 to the power of x is equal to log 3. Bring the x down, so x log 2 is equal to log 3. And then if you divide both sides by log 2, you're going to get the x is equal to log 3 divided by log 2. And let's just work that out and see what we get. x is equal to and x would be equal to here 1.58496 and so on and again you could round that perhaps to 1.585 or something like that to three decimal places and that's it so we've got our two values of x and the question asks us to solve that equation and we've done it and that's it so in this video we've looked at how to solve some more index equations and this time we've been looking at these type of ones where um we've really been turning them into quadratics and solving them and then using our logarithms at the end to work out our values of x and that's it